We've had a lot of discussion in the past about how we believe the cut quality is better on a three spindle mower versus a single spindle. Think of it as a three blade versus a single blade. But we've never really done a side-by-side -side test. Today's the day. Let's get started. The way we're gonna run this test is to mow this section over here with the flex wing, this section right here with the six foot single spindle mower. I'm gonna leave this strip here in the middle so that we can come back to this a little bit later and, and look at it after the fact and remember what happened. One of the key points that I'm looking for is the grass right behind the tractor tires. I always feel like I see more grass come back up behind a single spindle than I do on this flex wing. I've tried to set these at approximately the same height. I've tried to get them set appropriately, uh, as in level or slightly tipped downward to the front. I'm trying to make this test as good as I can. Both of these are Rhino mowers. They're both quality mowers. Uh, the only thing is with this one, right before I started this test, I hit a steel fence post uh, with two of the blades here. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. I'm gonna get started mowing. Hey, I want to thank all of you who came to the Farm Progress Show to meet us. It was a lot of fun to meet you, visit with you a while, learn about your tractors and your families. Yeah, thanks for coming by. Now, you get some good views here of the vegetation that we're mowing. One thing I notice is that when I'm looking at it on camera, it doesn't seem nearly as heavy as what it does in person. But you'll see a lot of variety. You'll see some trees already sprouting up. Uh, you'll see some broad leaves, and some areas are fairly heavy in grass. Uh, some foxtail down on the other end. Overall, without some work, it wouldn't make very good hay. Let's put it that way. Uh-oh, looks like I was paying too much attention to the camera, and I started skipping. If you're relatively new to our channel, this is about a five acre property where this tower is located. The tower is no longer in use, but from my understanding, they still have some hope that it might be used in the future, so they don't really want to tear it down. When we moved here, it was growing up rapidly, nearly out of control. I contacted the owner and asked if they would be willing to allow us to maintain it. And they liked the idea, they hired us. To keep it mowed down, they're pretty flexible with us, so they don't really care if it's uh, mowed every week. Ooh, big rock there. Yep, and I hit it, so I guess that evens out the blade. This one's been hit by a rock real big, and the other one with that fence post. Anyway, we mow it a maximum, I think, of four times a year. Seems like it's hard for us to even get to it that often. We're also working on getting the rest of that brush mulched or disposed of in some way. We're always on the lookout for new attachments or equipment to help with that brush removal, as we've been kind of using it as a play area just uh, experimenting with different attachments and different tractors. We charge the owner very little for this work because we get a lot of value out of it ourselves. Just having this area so close to our house has been an incredible benefit for us. Oops, another skip. Oh well, have to get a better tractor driver next year. Maybe Christy can drive.
One variable that's hard for me to particularly control is the travel speed. I don't have speedometers on these machines, so it's hard for me to tell if I'm going exactly the same speed. For this Kubota, I'm going about the speed that I want to go when I'm mowing. I, any, any faster, it just gets so rough, at least on this ground, it's not pleasant to sit on the seat. So I'm really going as fast as I'd want to go. Now about power, there were several places where it was heavier uh, over on this side and, and some on back there that um, really was all I wanted with this uh, LX3310 with the six foot single spindle. So it, it is fascinating to me how, how close a six foot single spindle and a 10 foot flex wing are and how hard they pull. I, I really think uh, something like a nine foot or a, a eight and a half foot flex wing would be essentially equivalent to a six foot single spindle. I, I think that's fascinating. Now we can see a few things that uh, are, are left up here. It's possible that one or two of those may be from an actual skip, especially over here in this first round. Uh, I overlapped a little bit more on the subsequent rounds, so I believe that tree that's sticking up there is not a skip. I think that's a legitimate miss by the mower. Uh, probably knocked down by the tractor, missed by the mower, and then it sprung back up later. We can see some of that. We can see some areas where it's come back up behind the, the tires already. Let's see how the flex wing works. Now you can hear right here where it's pulling the engine down. That heavier stuff right there is all I want. For a lot of this material though, the 2038R seems to have enough horsepower to be able to handle the flex wing fairly nicely. A lot of commenters think it's absurd that I would recommend this combination or even show it on video. My opinion is it all depends on how you plan to use a mower like this. If you have a grassy field that you want to mow say every three to four weeks, you don't want to keep it quite like a typical lawn but you also want to make sure that it doesn't grow up nearly as much as what this patch has grown up that we're working right now. For that scenario, this combination works great. I think Christy's doing a great job of following along with the drone here, but I still can't tell if you're getting the full effect of the differences in the cut quality. I enjoy the cab of Johnny 5 when I'm mowing, there's no question about that. But I also really like the hydrostatic drive. It's quite helpful to be able to vary the speed easily, as well as to be able to go from forward to reverse to forward again without a hitch. I'm guessing the optimal deer machine for this particular mower would be a 3046R or any 4R tractor with a hydrostatic transmission. Let's start here with the flex wing and kind of analyze the cut a little closer. I believe what I'm seeing stick up, I mean, it's, it's not perfect. There are a few things sticking up. It looks like it's the heavier stems. I'll walk right down here and I'll see a, a couple of stems like this that are sticking up. Just the heavier stuff. I don't believe I see any grass, or none to speak of anyway, coming up behind the tires, but I do see some larger stems. When I look at the cut overall, the cut is, uh, I would say, really good. One thing I do notice with this mower is it, it puts a little bit of the, kind of bunches the 
trash right in the middle of the mower. So you end up having some areas on the side, probably two thirds of it, that doesn't get as much grass distributed uh, back over it. Uh, most of it's brought to the middle. So that's one thing I noticed there. The cut's not perfect, but it's pretty good. I couldn't pull the flex wing quite as fast with Johnny 2 as what I was running with the six footer um, with the KT LX3310. But I pulled it as fast as I could and I tried not to let it uh, spin the PTO RPMs down very much because I didn't want to have a slower speed. I thought that would uh, hurt our cut quality a little bit. So I, I was uh, trying to be very careful there. That's one thing a hydrostatic transmission allows you to do. It allows you to vary your speed very uh, simply. And if, if I were using a gear drive transmission, to be frank, I don't think I could pull this mower. By using a hydrostat, I'm able to let off of it when I need to and go a little faster when it pulls a little bit easier. And that kind of brings up one thing that I did notice. My goodness, in the three rounds that we did here with the flex wing, I accomplished a lot more than what we did in the three rounds uh, with the single spindle. Um, it's probably an obvious thing, but it's just very noticeable when we, uh, when we actually do them side by side. Let's go look at the single spindle now and look at that cut quality a little closer. Looking close at this single spindle, we can see that there is grass as well as brush, ouch, including some thorns, man, uh, that are um, sticking up here that just, you know, when I, when I go through there, it just, it just didn't cut it. I'm no expert on mowers, but what I believe is happening is that the three spindle mower with essentially three blades, or you might say six blades, is able to create more lift and pull that grass up behind the tractor tires so that it can get it cut. That just, it, a little bit of a vacuum that goes on there. And, and I think that that's just something that can't be done with a single spindle mower quite as easily. So the grass gets distributed a little bit better uh, left or right maybe on the single spindle, but then I notice that there are also some, some piles of grass, you know, where it kind of rolls out of it uh, over, over time too. So in that sense, I don't know that the distribution is a whole lot better than it is for the three spindle. Uh, we still see some sprigs sticking up, uh, just like we did with the flex wing mower, but I think we're seeing more grass behind the tire coming back up. Maybe we should go take a look at the cutting we did with the LX3310 and the flex wing a few weeks ago. If you missed that video, uh, we just did a temporary hack to be able to use the LX3310 on the flex wing. And that cutting was probably done somewhere between two and four weeks ago. Uh, time's been flying for me, so I'm not sure how long ago it was. But I think it'll be uh, informational and educational for us to take a look at that now. It's been a dry time here, so not all of the vegetation has grown back up really nicely. This fescue uh, can handle the dry weather better, and so it has grown back up. This is not a case of, of the fescue not being cut. It's, it's actually grown back in that amount of time. Uh, you can see the strips here where the grass was kind of bunched into the middle behind the flex wing. Uh, it's still there. You can still see it. You can see a few twigs again that have come back. Uh, but overall, I'm pretty impressed with this. I, I think uh, it looks good. I, I, I'm really happy with how that flex wing picks up the grass behind the tires. I don't know why that bothers me, but I saw it just today again. Uh, someone had mowed a, a, a small plot with a single spindle mower and, and it clearly had been done a week or so ago and you know some of it was mowed and some of it was standing back up and you know if I'm doing a job like that it's kind of embarrassing to me I end up mowing it two or three times trying to trying to take care of that so I don't know if it bothers you and I don't know if it bothers the customer I, I have no idea but it bothers me <laughs> and I guess that's what matters when when I'm doing the work look at this along here this is a tire track right here Seems like it's coming back up right before our eyes here as we wait a few more minutes. It just keeps, it keeps coming back up. This again is on the single spindle, six foot, three point mower side. I think I got that thorn in my finger. So who knows the rest of this video, may, I may be kind of grouchy. I'm being kind of tough on a single spindle mower and that's really not fair because uh, the comparison between this and a flex wing is a you know, it, it's, it's a mile apart in price. I mean, dramatically more expensive for a flex wing mower. 
Um, these single spindle mowers are tough. They'll last a long time. They'll get your mowing done. Uh, the main reason I do this comparison is because some of you have been asking more and more questions about the flex wing. I think now that a flex wing is offered down in a 10 foot size, uh, it used to be only 15 and then they went down to 12 and now they've got these 10 footers. It, it opens it up for a lot of us with smaller tractors. So I felt like it's, it's important that we, that we actually show some of the differences, but of course, most of us that are entry level just simply cannot afford to spend that extra money on a mower. Now, having said that, if you're gonna be mowing the same property for the next 25 years, um, the difference in price of the mower is, is not gonna play into it too much, right? I mean, you'll, you'll be able to utilize the, the advantages of a flex wing mower for many years to come. Uh, so if, if, if you're thinking about a long-term investment, I think you might oughta consider stepping up but if you just use a mower just a little bit, uh, rarely, um, one of these single spindle mowers really does the job. Another advantage to the single spindle mower is maneuverability. Um, with being three-point mounted, I'm able to back it in and turn it around a lot quicker and a lot easier than a uh, flex wing pull type mower. So that's something to consider as well. Folks, I hope you've enjoyed this comparison. If you have any discussion on this or any other tractor topic, you got questions, uh, please check out tractoruniverse.com. Uh, we've got a lot of activity on there uh, since we got it started. It's just a great place for us to ask and ask questions of each other and, and uh, communicate and, and kind of develop a little community there. So tractoruniverse.com, check it out. Now as for me, I'm gonna go ahead and do a lot more of this mowing. I don't know if I'm going to finish the entire property, but I think I'm going to use the flex wing. Um, just gets it done a lot faster and I don't want to be all night on this project. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim.